Last episode concluded with me building the bee farm behind me, but this episode is gonna be wild. So much stuff happened on the server. And I also wanted to tell you about exploiting cross-site scripting issues on Minecraft servers and another story about the protocol vulnerability I found in March. But first, let's see what happened next on the server. As you can see, more people discovered the server and started playing on it, which is super cool. But that also meant I started to get scared for my life on here, so I went into creative mode. This way they cannot damage me, simplest cheat I can do on my own server. In my defense, I'm lazy and I kinda have to do it, especially when I want to stay AFK to record stuff. Otherwise, players will mess with me. For example, see what they did here again. Imagine if they could actually kill me. This way it's just funny. Anyway, I just wanted to figure out what people have been doing on the server, so I kept flying around. The first thing I noticed were all the signs. There were so many new signs. While a building or destroyed terrain is always a sign of life, signs are kind of special because they are an actual message somebody typed out. So awesome to see. So while I have seen quite a few players online and seen so many signs, I do not see much happening at spawn except this one house, which was actually built somewhere in the style of the other houses, pretty empty inside, but I'm happy somebody built something here. Not so happy I'm about this crappy wall up here. What is this? Hopefully somebody cleans this up. I also used the x-ray mod we have developed in a previous episode to hunt for more secrets underground, but nothing really jumps out. I did however find these signs. Somebody didn't want to explore more because the videos are getting released very slowly and are like one to two months behind the state of the server. So apparently so many spoilers here to see, but I don't think there are too many spoilers. I cannot find new stuff anywhere I'm flying. At least I got to meet some people. Here we try to take a selfie. Hmm. Well, this is the state of the server end of June and more and more players are going to find the server. So maybe I just have to give it a bit more time. Hopefully in the future there will be more to see. Over two weeks have passed now and oh my god, what happened at spawn? Remember how I built this bedrock hole with lava and campfires? It was supposed to be a jail for people to only get out with hacks. And this spawn cannot be modified by anybody besides me. So where's the lava, where's my campfire and why is there obsidian? Ooh, there's a person caught in the act. What can you say for yourself? Did you commit these crimes? After interrogation and some light torture, I can conclude they maybe didn't do this, but they did tell me how they found my server. Remember how I had leaked the IP in a previous video? Well, this person is running their own personal archiving service and they had the original video still downloaded. The internet never forgets. Thanks for the chat, but I have a crime to solve. Let's investigate more of the area. We have a wooden frame around the spawn area. That must be the built border. Inside of this area, nobody can build, but there is some cobblestone. We have lots of signs around this area. Maybe one of them is the culprit. They are all suspects. Was it maybe you automated? After more heavy torture, they at least revealed to me how they found the server and apparently I effed up again and didn't censor the IP properly. Apparently the IP was visible in the terminal window title. Oh my god, no effing way. How can I be so bad at censoring the server IP? Let's ignore this fail and come back to this area here. What happened at spawn? Oh wow, look over there, a big wheat field. Whoever built this probably didn't destroy spawn because this is an actual act of kindness, providing food for all the hackers escaping the bedrock hole. Thanks for doing that, love it. Let's see, what else can we find over here? Oh my god, what is that over there? Is that a roller coaster? Wow, that looks amazing. Exit and entrance, let's take a ride. Sands and Syntex roller coaster. Here we can get a free card, place it on the rail and hit the button. Okay, and on the sign it says hold W. Let's do that and off we go. Woohoo! That's so cool. Let's enjoy some music while we take a ride.
that was awesome. Thanks so much for building this. I will visit again. We also have a small house here with lots of banners and maybe something in the nether? Hmm, nope, doesn't look like it. Let's fly back to base and see if anything changed there. And indeed, another house appeared. Really cool, oh, it's only half finished. And what is that? That is an illegal villager trading area. I did not issue a permit for this. This is pure anarchy. Ooh, another house or attempt of a house. Okay, cool. And where did my big trees go? I always replanted them, all gone. Also, the wall is still not fully built, great. But oh my god, what is that back there? That is new, look at that. Two bases built into the mountain. That is awesome, so cool. Love to see these spills. At the lake where we went fishing earlier in the series, also a troll man's skull appeared mysterious. As you can see, more and more activity, more and more builds, more and more signs, and nobody lava casted my base yet. So that's incredible and really fun to see on a server only playable by Minecraft hackers. By the way, remember the mysterious player who was on the server from the beginning who was also able to obtain bedrock to put me in this jail? I'm the only admin on the server, or am I? Hmm. So clearly the bedrock is evidence that somebody either found a bug in the game to get arbitrary items, or somebody got unauthorized access to in-game administrator capabilities, or somebody really hacked into the Linux server. I guess this is like incident response or forensics. So let's go over some options. Could it be log for shell? Probably not. I'm currently running 1.18.2, which is safe. Is there maybe a known bug in Minecraft to acquire arbitrary blocks like bedrock in 1.18? Of course, we don't know, but probably not. There could be, but stuff like that would be very powerful on any servers. And I feel like if somebody found a bug like that, it eventually would have spread and we would get tons of stories about these crazy hackers. So I consider the chance of that very low. It's never impossible, just very low. So maybe somebody got access onto the server, for example, through an SSH exploit? Also unlikely. Same reason, if there would be an SSH vulnerability, it would be so powerful that it's worth millions of dollars and used in state level hacking. It's unlikely somebody would use that against my Minecraft server. So the only last option we have is maybe they got admin or OP permission in Minecraft. Oftentimes this is done through malicious plugins, but I don't think I installed anything bad. But if a player got OP permission, the player might be included in the ops.json config file. So let's check it. Cat ops.json, oof, there it is. This other player somehow got OP. We could also check the logs to see when this player joined the first time and maybe we see something in there that explains it to us. All right, because I use the Docker Minecraft server setup with Docker Compose, we can use Docker Compose logs to print out all the logs and then we can filter for the username with grep. Let's look all the way at the top and do you see that script tags loading JavaScript code? What does this script do? Without context, we can just guess, but it looks like somewhere it enters the op command and then clicks an HTML element with the ID send archon command, probably a button. And this is everything we need to know. This is a XSS attack, a cross-site scripting attack. So let's say you rent a server at some kind of Minecraft server hoster. They usually give you a web console for Minecraft. In there, you can do various admin commands like making somebody op. Of course, this is a website written in HTML and JavaScript. And as you can see, when a player writes a chat message, it shows up in the console. So what happens if a player sends a message with an HTML tag, for example, h1. This tag tells the browser this text is a header. And see that the text is written like a header with large letters. But it would also be obvious in game, every other player would see a chat message. So instead of just a normal message, one could also send a fake command. So slash ASD and then an H1 tag. This way it's not a chat message and it doesn't show up for other players, but in the console it is still shown. And this is a very serious vulnerability. As you can see, when I try to change the game mode to creative, I cannot do that, I'm not OP right now. But if we send the whole payload like Herobrine did, then we become OP made live overflow a server operator. And we can now change the game mode to creative, we can fly, we can change the time, and we can get access to any block we want, including bedrock. So let's investigate the technical details further, how this attack really works. And there's a neat trick for investigating XSS like this. In the website with the console, we open up the developer tools, and then in-game we inject a script tag with the debugger statement. 
So if the site is vulnerable to XSS cross-site scripting, it basically means instead of our input being displayed as literal text, it is interpreted as HTML code. And in that case, the JavaScript code includes a debugger statement, which is like a breakpoint. This can be used to debug and analyze code. When we send this message, you can see that the developer console is triggered, debugger paused, and we can see our JavaScript code here. And look here at the call stack. These are all the JavaScript functions that were called leading to the execution of our malicious code. We can now look through the various functions, but the most interesting to us is probably write to console from the console UI script. So this is the code of the website implementing the browser console, specifically when new data has to be written into the page. And here you can see that the data variable is our chat message, and it simply concatenates this data with our HTML code and appends it to the console output. This is the vulnerability here. You must not take malicious user input and place it as HTML data onto the site. The fix for that is simple though. Instead of appending the HTML data, make it explicit that this is just text. For example, by creating this row standard div element first and then write the user input with inner text. This way you could tell the browser, this is just text, this is not HTML code, which means this malicious script is never executed. I just wanted to make it clear in case somebody is confused. This is all a thought experiment, a made up example storytelling of how somebody could have gotten OP permission. Spoiler alert, in reality, I'm Herobrine. Whoa, shocking, I know, who would have guessed? Sorry to ruin the mystery. But the point is, even if it's not real, it totally could be real. The hack we just talked about is absolutely something that could happen because the vulnerability is real. I just think packaging this vulnerability into a fun story makes it a bit more engaging. So a few months back when I did the worldwide Minecraft server scanning and I tested for Log4Shell, I actually also tested for exactly this issue. I injected a script tag with a payload to test if it executes. Even though I scanned thousands and thousands of servers, I didn't find a single server responding. But this is the problem with this vulnerability. XSS is an issue where you don't attack the server, you attack another user. So Herobrine can only attack me with this XSS payload when I have this website with the console open. If this website is not open, there's nothing to interpret this HTML code. And most users never open this browser console. So randomly exploiting somebody with this is a very, very low probability. But of course, in a targeted attack, somebody could ask the server admin, hey, can you check in the console something for me? They open the browser and then you send the malicious message, boom, you got admin on the server. So while it cannot be exploited on a big scale, it's still very useful in a targeted attack. Now, of course, not every Minecraft browser console is vulnerable to this. For example, while I haven't tested Peridactyl myself, which is a server hosting solution a lot of businesses use, I did ask on the Discord and people told me when they tested it, it didn't trigger. So this is not a widespread issue. But there's at least one Minecraft server hoster who is vulnerable to that. I know that because I'm a customer and I checked it. I actually reported it on the 3rd of March, including a fix recommendation. I sent two emails and a Twitter message but didn't get a response or acknowledgement. And over two months later, it was still not fixed. Also, it's the same company who didn't mitigate Log4Shell months after the vulnerability was publicly known. But I'm getting sidetracked. Let's come back to the original investigation. How did somebody remove the lava and add the obsidian here? More signs, more people, maybe it was one of them? Hmm. Let's investigate the crime scene further. And um, what am I seeing there? Is that a dispenser with a water bucket inside, just outside the restricted build area? Let's hit the button and see what happens. Oh wow, the water flows all the way into the hole. That's what happened. They got water over there and then solidified the lava, turned it into obsidian. Also now, non-hackers can escape spawn as well by swimming up the water. Sneaky. The cobblestone then is also probably a lava cast. Lava flowed a little bit into the build restricted area and turned into cobblestone with water. Mystery solved, I'm so smart. But actually, there are smarter people than me. Remember the vulnerability I reported in the Minecraft protocol in March 2022? Known plaintext attack on AES, CFB8 encrypted packets? There is more to the story. When I submitted this bug, some bird whispered me that somebody else had reported a related issue but a few months earlier and their report was apparently more critical than mine. What did I miss? Is there a more serious bug that I didn't see? This drove me insane. So here are my notes on what I heard about the other security bug, trying to figure out what it was. 
To my understanding, an exploit with the same vector exists. The exploit idea is a bit different. They do exploit predictable AS packages and require the victim to be in the same network, but it could potentially be escalated into sending completely attacker controlled packages, not requiring specific actions from the victim, essentially allowing to completely play using the victim's account. And their proof of concept also includes using a proxy server as a way to observe packages. But their example merely shows the replay attack and getting kicked for invalid packages, not actually going further. Oh my gosh, I started to contact lots of different technical Minecraft players and brainstormed with a few of them. What could I have missed? Luckily, after about a week or so, I finally got in contact with this other person. It was VK Tech. She is the genius who apparently found a more critical issue than mine in the same area of the protocol. So let's check out her report. If you haven't seen the previous episode about the Minecraft protocol before or you don't remember it anymore, rewatch that episode please to refresh your mind because we head straight into the technical details now. So here it is, replay attack against encrypted sessions. Minecraft's protocol uses AES CFB8 encryption with no message authentication or nonces. This makes it trivially susceptible to replay attacks. Hmm, a full replay attack? So the public key of the server is probably always the same and the client chooses the secret. So if we just record all initial packets, including the packet that contains the encrypted secret, which is then later used for the AS encryption, we can just replay all packets. Of course, we don't know what packets were sent and we cannot change the content that's AS encrypted, but we can replay it because the encryption uses the same secret as before. Which basically means if we recorded packets of a player joining a server, we can replay these packets at a later time and basically join as that user again. But of course only replay those packets so we cannot fully take over that account, just perform the same actions again. Yeah, that's an angle I haven't thought about. I love that. I love that I stared at this protocol for such a long time and this attack idea didn't come to my mind. This is so awesome. But the report goes even further. Additionally, as Minecraft does not kick players for sending invalid packets, it is theoretically possible to replay actions out of order. CFB8 is self-correcting after 16 bytes of invalid data, meaning an attacker can send the 16 bytes of data preceding the packet they want to send in order to replay an arbitrary packet. Oh my gosh, yes. I mean, I think some corrupted packets can cause you to disconnect, but generally speaking, this should work. When I explained AS CFB8 mode in my previous video, I left out an important part, but this way it was a bit simpler. The detail didn't matter for my vulnerability. But for the self-synchronization exploited here, it does matter. In my graphic, it looks like we always pass in one single byte into the AES decryption function and we get a single byte out. But that is not the case. AES operates always on 16 byte blocks. So the trick is CFB8 mode works by shifting over the encrypted stream of bytes, always in 16 byte blocks. So let's say we have some Minecraft packets. These are for example two different long chat messages. This stream of bytes gets encrypted with AES CFB8 mode. In other AES encryption modes you would divide that into 16 byte blocks, but in CFB8 mode the byte blocks are shifted byte by byte or shifted by 8 bits. That's why it's called CFB8. So we always apply AS to 16 bytes, but because of CFB8 mode, only XOR the first byte and keep that as an encrypted byte. This way we slowly get a stream of output bytes. Now on the receiving end, when the server decrypts these bytes, we again take a block of 16 bytes and start shifting it as well and always XOR one byte to get an output byte. Now imagine we want to replay this Minecraft packet in a different order or replay this packet again at a later time. So we take the encrypted bytes and we inject it into some other random packets. When decrypting, the sliding AES window will now start decrypting gibberish for 16 bytes because these new bytes are not what was expected. But after these 16 bytes at the start of our actual chat message, the AAS CFB8 mode basically self-synchronized and recovered the state. Now everything is getting decrypted correctly and we successfully replayed an older chat message. That is a really, really cool attack. 
And comparing this to my issue, this is super fascinating. I think this attack describes a much more severe critical vulnerability, but it's also harder to pull off in practice. In contrast, mine, admittedly still hard to exploit in practice, has a clearer attack idea, but impact is not that severe. On the other hand, this also has effects on my attacks. I didn't understand the self-synchronization property of ASCFB8 before, so I assumed after modifying a byte in my attack, the decryption will produce garbage and the client always disconnects. But that is not the case, the protocol can recover. It was so cool to talk to VK Tech about this issue and it's a really cool example of security research. Even though we both looked at the same area and our attacks are both a result of the same bad crypto, she didn't think of my attack idea of modifying packets and I didn't think of her attack idea of replaying packets. So when we combine our knowledge, combine our ideas and learn from each other, we actually get a more powerful attack and that is beautiful. Collaboration is always better. Now, while we were talking about AS and I stood around AFK on the server, of course players started to mess with me again. First, they turned me into a bouncy overflow, then they added a jail around it, played music and eventually even shot me into space with a rocket. You have been sent to Mars by SpaceX, no refunds though. By the way, the dirt square down there, whoever made it called it Ireland, it's a huge potato farm.